I think it's only proper, not I think, I believe, it's only proper for me tonight to bring honor to a man that I had the highest regard for. When he walked this earth and he was called up to be with the Lord just this past week, and when I heard the news of Pastor Ray McCauley who had passed, there was that bit of sadness on the inside of me, but then also the joy of the Lord that fills us when we know what he always preached, and that is the hope we have after this physical body lays itself down. Now, he, for me personally, carried a very, very sp special place in my heart, personally. Because I got born again through the Rhema ministry when they were still in the Colosseum in Johannesburg. <laughs> That's a lot of years ago. That's 40 years ago. <laughs> and I was quite sad, and I wanted to take the first part of this session tonight to give honor where honor is due, because it's right in the kingdom of God and by the Spirit of God to do it. And I was very sad when they were actually going to demolish the Colosseum in Johannesburg to make place for more modern buildings. A guy that I worked with at that time at Telcom, his mom was the one that spearheaded the, the, the whole movement to stop the breaking down and the demolishing of the Colosseum. But as we know, it didn't stand and they did demolish it. And it was special for me because that's where I got born again. That morning when I got born again there and I walked out of that church, I actually jumped in the air. I physically jumped in there and I fist pumped the air. And the two guys that were standing at the door that greeted the people as we walked out, they just looked at me funny because that was the life that I had been looking for and seeking. I found that Sunday morning. And I've said it and I still say it today. I don't know of any pastor in the world. And guys... I have listened to hundreds of pastors. I have the ministry of hundreds of pastors on my shelves here. I still have the audio cassettes. I have boxes and boxes of audio cassettes. Of the Rhema conferences, I tried never to miss a Rhema conference. But I've never heard a pastor give an altar call like Ray McCauley. Never. <laughs> so... Pastor Ray knew how to lure people by the Spirit of God and just the way he had about himself into the kingdom of God. There's one thing that he said the one morning that I visited the church. Now, I used to go to Rhema when I was still living in Hillbrow. I caught two buses just to get to the Randburg because when they demolished the, 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 the Colosseum, they moved to Randburg to the Tony Factors in-town discount center, those of you who remember. And I caught two buses to go to Rayma in the mornings on a Sunday. And Ray McCauley made this statement the one morning. He said, he believes that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the only institution in the world that should exist for its non-members. And that flattened me. And I thought, how true is that? Because the church really should exist for its non-members. What does that mean? That it's open for the world to come in, to come into the kingdom. So our whole outlook and ministry, and you'll see tonight the Spirit of God and what he's busy saying to us as the church, is that we need to have our eyes focus out there. It's not on a Sunday morning, wherever we fellowship, to shine our lights in one another's eyes, to see whose light shines the brightest. You've heard me talk about this before. I feel very, very strongly about this. That we are lights, according to Matthew chapter 5, I think it's verse 27 or 17. We are supposed to let our lights shine out there in the world. Who can die world weet van Jesus as ons lichte nie daar buiten skynie? I've had some people that were not quite impressed with some of the things I've said, and that's okay. But I said, if the Lord ever gave us our own premises, there would be a sign above the entrance that would say, all sinners welcome. You say, really? Yes. All sinners welcome. Jesus sat around a table 
with sinners. And the Pharisees scolded him for it. They called him a friend of sinners and a wine bibber. And Jesus took that not as an offense. <laughs> this is what I'm so impressed with my Jesus with this. Jesus took that and he wore it as a badge of honor. Because he made the statement, he said, a physician is not there for those who are well. A physician, he is there for those who are sick. And he came for the brokenhearted. Again, Isaiah, the Lord, he has anointed me to bring deliverance to the captives, sight to the blind, open the prison doors. When we go and read that and we see that that's what Jesus was all about. And he repeats that again in Luke chapter 4, where the scroll is handed to him in the book of Isaiah. And he says the same thing. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he goes through the whole list again. This man sitting behind the microphone tonight, ministering to you. It's because of the ministry of Pastor Ray McCauley. And the Lord spoke to me many, many years ago and said we needed to honor him as a father of the city. And I thank the Lord for the work that he had done and the vision that man carried and how many churches across the world started because of his faithfulness to the ministry and the calling of God. Amen. I wanted to do that tonight. I felt it was only right as a son of that ministry of 40 years ago to bring the honor where the honor is due. And I thank the Lord for that. You know, there are people who are building into your lives. Maybe I'm just fulfilling that small role. But maybe there are just things that I say by the Spirit of God. I always will clarify that. It's not this man. By the Spirit of God will say things that will establish you, will strengthen you. And there will be a consistency that will come into your life in the Spirit. And you'll keep on moving. And God will, God will work through other people in your life in order to get you to where he wants you to be. How many of you know that God will move you even across fences and across borders? And I'm talking about spiritual borders. Into green pastures where he wants you to be fed properly by the spirit through the word so that you can be established in the kingdom of God to bring relief also to the lives of others. Amen. That's what we've been called to do. Every single one of us, we are light bearers and we are carriers of salt. We are salt containers. We, we have it on the inside of us. And we bring that flavor to a very broken, very broken, confused world. And this time that we are in right now, the season we are in. So what I want to talk about tonight really is that structures are collapsing. And the Lord showed me very clearly. The picture he showed me was modern buildings. And from the outside, they looked very magnanimous very elaborate very really prestige buildings with all the bells and whistles and it looked like they had it made all those companies with these fancy buildings they had it made but as i walked inside every single one of them they were all overgrown on the inside like like in like the bush felt was inside the building and I looked at that and I said, Lord, but what is it that you are showing me? And he says, the structures of the world are collapsing. And the bridges, that's why you'll see that picture I put in. The bridges that people have built. The bridges, bridges that men have built. In order to get to the others in the world system to be strengthened by one another and for them to strengthen the other to join hands as the system of the world against the things of God. Those structures are collapsing fast and furiously. The, the spirit of God held me out. I'm talking about help me out, help me back with something that I was going to start sharing a couple of weeks ago already. And I have learned, guys, I still miss it, just like all of us. But I try as much as I can to stay accurate in the spirit and especially the timing. 
the timing of the spirit for me is so crucial because you can say the right thing at the wrong time and it's got no effect whatsoever because it's not in the spirit's time. That moet die tijd wees van die heilige gees wanneer jy dit moet doen. I can't share tonight, but I, I've got examples of my own personal life of how God tested me in that. Where he would give me prophetic words. I would write it down. And I would carry it with me. And he would say, it's not time yet. It's not time yet. It's not time yet. Until he says to me, now release it. And I would release it at the right time. Because you can get into the flow of the ministry so strongly and you miss the Holy Spirit. Absolutely, guys. So stick with the Holy Spirit. So I had a vision a number of years ago. Now we're going back possibly about two and a half to three years on a Sunday night where I had an open vision of, now listen to this, of a woman that was going to rise to power in the United States of America into the presidency where she is now. And we're talking about Kamala Harris. Do you know that I actually forgot about that vision that I shared, let's say, three years ago? Somebody contacted me and said to me, have you seen what is busy happening in America with this woman and what is busy happening under her leadership? And then she said this, do you remember that you shared with us at that time that vision that God showed you? And it, and. I said to her, but please remind me again some of the things that I said, because we don't always remember everything, guys. And the bit I did remember, and then she just added to that. I saw a woman rise up in leadership in the United States of America. And I saw this garden, and she walked into the garden. And it was a beautiful garden. And every step that she took, everything, as she took a step, where she had just stepped, everything next to her, went into darkness. In fact, in that vision that I saw, the trees started dying and the flowers started wilting. Everything went pitch black. And all this beautiful greenery and the, 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 the foliage and the, the, the beauty of the garden and the fragrance, as she took a step, everything became dark and black. The darkness fell upon it, and the trees lost their leaves, they lost their fruit, and the flowers all started wilting. That's the picture I saw at that time already. So God shows us these things, guys. God points it out to us, and what we are seeing is a rising up against the very, the very throne of God with evil agendas. And God is allowing it only for a season. I want to say to you tonight, we must be patient. God knows exactly what he's doing as well as in this country. Woo, glory. We are going to see the collapse of structures in the time we are in right now. The Lord showed me, it was, that many of you will remember this. This is possibly about a year and seven months, two years ago, where I saw buildings with the names of companies that are prominent names in the world. And these buildings were busy collapsing. And tonight the Lord showed me that bridge that I, that I put the picture in of where bridges are starting to collapse. Because there's a scripture in Proverbs that says, even though the evil... And the, the, the children of the world hold hands and join hands against God to come into agreement against God. Their agreement will have no power, obviously, against the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Now, we are in the month of October. Yeah, exactly. I know many of you said it now in your minds. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Hell, Owen. Today, my wife had a discussion with me. We spoke about it. And she said something, and I immediately agreed with her. She says, I feel this year, you mustn't talk about Halloween. 
hell are we? You mustn't talk about it because every year I basically give a teaching on it, on the background, where it came from, and all of that. It's not necessary. She said, why don't we do something different with the people of God? Why don't we get together online as well? We get together and where we meet in person. And we pray. And we stand together as the people of God. And then when it's online, we have communion and we pray. And by the way, I feel the Lord is calling a fast. I will let you know the dates of the fast. We still have that group going on open windows. We are going to share with you when it is. Folks, I know that has been a while that we haven't fasted and prayed. But I want to say this to you. You can do something as a habit. And it's okay. But when you do it and it's prompted by the Spirit, it carries so much more power. So I want to en encourage you tonight. Just stay with the clock and the compass. This is, I never plan on saying this. This is the Holy Spirit. Stay with the clock and the compass of the Holy Spirit. The clock is the timing. The compass is the direction. Can I dive here, say? The clock is the timing. The compass is the direction. You cannot go wrong with those two. Because that means you are going to be in the, in the kairos time of God. Kairos in the Greek is the appointed time of God. But you can be in the appointed time of God and still go <laughs> in the wrong direction. Absolutely. Even though your timing is right. But the Holy Spirit gives you the compass so that you start and get traction in the Spirit. And then you follow the accurate direction that the Holy Spirit is pointing out to you. So what must we do as the people of God with these structures that are busy collapsing around us? And they are. We are going to see a lot more of it happening. A lot more of these structures are going to collapse. You remember there are three scriptures that I know of. There could be more. Three scriptures in the word of God that talks about the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's the one that's in the book of Proverbs. Then there's another one that says that he who has mercy on the poor, his needs are going to be supplied. God will take even the wealth of the unrighteous and bring it to the one who has mercy on the poor. Who's got mercy on the poor? The people of God. And God takes that very, very seriously. It even says that he who gives unto the poor lends unto the Lord, and the Lord will pay him back in due time. Due time? Kairos time, at the right time. All of these things that we are saying tonight is so important right now. The question is, what should you do as a child of God in the days we are in with the structures that are collapsing? You have to have your feet firmly planted in the kingdom of God with your eyes set on the throne to get direct instructions of what it is that the Father is saying to you by and through the Holy Spirit. So that you can be steadfast when they are collapsing. Man-made monuments, this is the way I wrote it down and what he gave. Man-made monuments are going to come, come down. In Proverbs 18, verse 11, very, very powerful scripture. I want to encourage the people of God again. I've been encouraging a few people to do that. Is the book of Proverbs, get back into it. We are going to need this in the days we are entering right now. The book of Proverbs, you've heard me talk about it, covers a wide spectrum of subjects. Lees een hoofstuk a dag. Jy nie derig hoofstukke, as die maand nie derig daar het, dan lees jy die laaste jy nie ook. Jy nie derig lees jy dan op dag nummer 30. So, get into the book of Proverbs, guys. You will not be sorry, because the wisdom that is in this book, that's exactly what it's about, is to give you wisdom. Now, it says here, 
in Proverbs 18, verse 11. Listen to this. The rich man's wealth is his own strong city. And as, I, I circled it in my Bible. It doesn't say that it is. And as a high protection wall in his own imagination and conceit. This is what God's busy bringing down. What man has built in order to establish himself for his own self-preservation and self, in many cases, self-elevation, a monument to his own name, so to speak, that has become the strong walls and walls that were edified and fortified for their own names, believing that they are self-made people. And those then who have these large companies who think that that's going to stand in the last days, they've got another thing coming. Because a lot of it is going to collapse. The verse just before this is a verse that I quote on a regular basis over my own life. I speak about it often, and it's a beautiful, beautiful verse. And you know it well. I'm going to start saying it, and you'll, I know you'll be able to quote it with me. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it, and they are safe. I want you to see this. I, I haven't seen this before. When I was preparing for tonight, I haven't seen this. The two verses, the one after the other. It's a comparison. It's a comparison with the structures of the world. These walls and buildings that they have erected in their own names. And what? And the name of the Lord. Now, this verse comes before this one. <laughs> the name of the Lord is a what? A strong building, a strong tower. And the righteous we don't stroll into it. We run into it. Ons hart loop daar in die gebou in. Ons hart loop in die toren in. And we are what? What's that word? Safe. Daar's jou antwoord. There is the answer tonight, guys. In the days we are in right now, you are going to see God's people running in this direction into the tower that is the name of the Lord. What can stand against that? When all of this falls and fails, this is going to be steadfast and strong and solid. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So when those bridges that people have built, when they are starting to collapse, we are going to see it in governments, this has been prophesied not just by me. Many others have prophesied this. <clears throat> also, that they are going to start fighting one another within the same parties. We're seeing it even in our nation. People from the same party are marching against that party. <laughs> That's what's happening. This was prophesied. What does the Bible say? Jesus himself said, for a house divided against itself cannot stand. A house divided against itself cannot stand. That's why it's coming down. You are going to see it happen. But I want, not I want, I'm saying I want because of my love for you. And the grace of God on the inside of me. I want you to remain steadfast and strong. But the Lord wants you to be that. And not to be moved by anything. A thousand may fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right hand. Psalm 91. But it's not going to come near you. Why? Because you've made the Lord your refuge. <laughs> and your stronghold. And your strength. Amen. Oh glory. I sense the anointing of the Lord. Tonight upon this message. And I know you are hearing it and you are receiving it. It's a strong, I feel it's a lifting word in the spirit for God's people. 
I've got here modern structures and man-made edifices. Edifices, edifices are coming down. Do you know a picture that the Lord showed? How many of you know God's got a sense of humor? Amen. Now, when I was on the farm with Granny and Opa many years ago, when I was a little lad of five, six, seven years old, I remember Granny sitting and knitting. And she would sit and knit and they would listen to the radio. There's no TV in those days. So we would listen to the radio. And Granny would sit and she would knit. And then I remember the one day I looked at her knitting and then she stopped and she started pulling it all out again. So I looked at her, I thought, now I'm a young lad and I first time to know anymore. And I said, Oma, who come to know my dad? Why are you pulling it out again? She said, but I get a fault gemaakt. So she had to pull it out and then she started started again. And you, though, ladies, those of you who have knitted, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, now I've never done it. <laughs> but you've done it, some of you, I'm sure. And that's a picture that I saw as well. Is that the world has knitted themselves this whole thing of what they believe is going to be their banner, their, their, uh, uh, their names that's going to be out there when whatever happens and they are going to be so safe. And you know what is happening? All of that. I will amper say, alle rafel uit. This is mooi gezegd in Afrikaans. The English word is fraying. F-R-A-Y-I-N-G. It's like a fraying at the ends. You know, there's a scripture in, 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 in Psalms that says, therefore do not fret. That word fret means to come loose at the ends. God's people is not going to fret. But the people in the world are going to come loose at the edges because of all the structures that they have put together that they have believed will stand in the last days. Then the Lord gave me this. Now, this is for somebody tonight. Here is my in van die wat ek sê, Jere, ek gaan het neerskryf, maar it's for somebody. Don't be impressed too quickly. It's for somebody there listening. Don't be too impressed too quickly. And I'll give you a bit of an example of what I believe the Lord is saying. When you walk into a place and it's called church, it's called ministry, it's called by whatever name, don't be impressed too quickly. Discern and operate and move and walk in the spirit. Why? Because we are in days right now that you cannot waste time. Means a word for me for now. Ons kan nie meer tyd moors nie. You cannot do more detours. You've got to get straight in to where the Holy Spirit is leading you, where He's guiding you, and you go in there. When you sense in your spirit, like the, the what's that game, Tetris, <laughs> when you are that Tetris block and you're busy moving down, and you get to that place and your shape fits exactly in that Tetris structure, that next block, Stay right there. Because God wants us to be accurate in the days we are in right now. Kry jou wortels in die grond in. Get your roots into it. Start growing and developing. Spread your roots. And the Afrikaanse word, word stand vastig in die ding. And beweeg saam met Godse mense. Move with the people of God. Don't be hanging on the fringes here any longer. Because those hanging around you on the fringes, the, 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 the predators, the lions, the uh, tigers, we don't have those in South Africa, the leopard, the cheetahs, the predators, they don't go to the middle of the pack and take on the main, main buffalo. Are you kidding me? The lions know that's not where you go. But they will look for the ones here on the side who's wandering around. Get with the pack. Stay with the pack. We're moving forward together as a team. Hallelujah. So that's for somebody tonight. Don't be impressed too quickly. Mark Seeker. The last point that the Lord gave me is man-made ministry is going to have to submit to spirit life revelation. I'm going to say that again. 
Man-made ministry. What's man-made ministry? When people plant themselves without the Spirit of God. When you start something and God's not in it. Remember, what God plants, you can never uproot. Never. You can mark with evil. <laughs> what God plants, I blade out. But what man plants, and it's out of the Spirit of God, God had nothing to do with that. God will pull it out. No problem whatsoever. So, so what is this word for us tonight? Bridges are collapsing. Structures are collapsing. The kingdom is rising. Ooh, glory. Can you see it? Can you see it in the Spirit? As these things are collapsing, we are becoming stronger. I'm even hearing people who are in ministry saying, oh, but the church is suffering right now. Oh, the church is going down. The numbers are going down. And, and I listen a bit to that, and I can't listen too much to that. I can't. Because it's so negative. I'll tell you which scripture immediately is contrary to what people are saying, even people in ministry. Jesus you know exactly what I'm going to say now, don't you? Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Messiah, the I am said. Say it with me. You know it. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Come on now. Come on, people of God. What God starts, he builds. And he finishes it. Because in his mind, it's already done. Why? Remember, he does it. The, he works out the beginning from the end. He starts in the spirit over here. Then he works back. So we're in a good place tonight. And I thank the Lord for that. Maybe you heard something tonight that struck gold in your spirit. But I want to ask you, if you are going to make a contribution, let it be in the spirit. Let it be on what's been said. Let it be on point, as you always hear me say, on point. And please keep it short. We have about five minutes that I can do this. And I am going to allow it tonight. So let's do this. Amen. All right, so there the microphones are on, so you can unmute yourself, and then if there's something, then you can share with us. Otherwise, I'm going to close for us. First, pray for you, then I'm going to close. All right. Thank you, Jesus. That means everybody's happy and you received the word tonight. I want to pray for you. I want to have the privilege of praying for you. That the Lord will come. Help you to be steadfast and strong. But that you shall stuch and sterk mark. And here it is where we are now. And I will weer say vanavond. Connecteer in the lichaam van Christus. Met die rechte mense. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for the word that you shared with us. And Father, not only are the structures of the world collapsing, bridges are collapsing, what man thought they could do in order to be sustained, you've come against that. And it's only your kingdom, Father, in the days we are in right now that is standing. And we honor you and we praise you for that. And Father, I thank you tonight that in the mighty name of Jesus, we can stand secure, we can stand steadfast, and we can stand strong, Father, in what it is that you have called us to do, every single one of us. Father, I pray for those who heard the word of God tonight, that they received it with joy. And Father, as we receive it with joy because it's always good news when you give it. It's always good news. That as we received it with joy, the good news is what we now will proclaim. Thank you that the kingdom that we are established in is an everlasting kingdom. 
And the roots go down deep because you planted it, Father. And you planted it through your son. And we thank you that the body of Christ, we are here to make an impact and a difference in the hearts and lives of people in this world. Father, we give you praise and thanks for that in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Eric just put a scripture on there that, um, that I'm going to read for us just to close off. We've got a few minutes, guys. Just stay with me. Matthew chapter 7. And I do believe I saw verse 24 in what he said. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. Amen. And the rain fell and the floods came. And the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a stupid, foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great and complete was the fall of it. When Jesus had finished these sayings, the Sermon on the Mount, the crowds were astonished and overwhelmed with bewildered wonder at his teaching. For he was teaching as one, I love the scripture, who had and was, the Amplified says, authority and not as the scribes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Eric, for that. It was exactly in line with what was said tonight. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I just sense I need to say to you tonight, let the peace of God guide God and govern your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Love you guys. You are valuable and precious. We'll speak to you next week.